Alright guys, today I got a 2011 F-150, and yes, it's the same one that needed the steering gear on it. It also has a few other issues with the brake booster, uh, uh, the brake vacuum pump, stuff like that. And it also has the drive shaft slip bump feel to it, but it has the one-piece drive shaft. There's a TSB out for the, the lube and the splines of the two-piecer, and that works perfect, no problems. Um, but this is a one-piece, what we do? Well... The problem is, it's still the same thing. It slides into the transfer case, and the same thing. The actual slides on there, the, the, the grooves where it splines onto it, they, they, they start binding up. So as you load and unload the rear suspension and all that under load, the drive shaft has to go in and out, depending on the height of the rear suspension. Well, if it can't do that, it'll do it by force, but it'll do it with a bang. And it's not going to be that hard of a bang, it's more like a... A bump like a, like the back end's going over bumps that aren't there, or like a another shift or, or something like that, like a harsh shift or a harsh downshift. Now this will happen going uh, taken off from a stop, and it'll happen um, coming to a stop. Now the 6R80s and the the Explorers and the F150s had the same problem uh, with a reflash, and they had the bump coming to the stop. But the transmission never had the problem taking off with a second bump. That's how you know it's the drive shaft. So what do you do? Well, the 2011's uh, Raptors had this problem, and they had a recall. They had a TSB, and then they had a recall finally. And they said the nickel plating on the inside of that that tube on there, where it splines and it allows it to be like slippery, and it'll go back and forth without wearing. They said it was not put on right or not enough or whatever reason, and uh, they recall them. Great, they fixed the Raptors. What about you guys that have the 2011 F-150s one-piece drive shafts? You kind of got shafted, right? So what you can do is a few different things. Now this one's getting a new drive shaft because it does have a service contract. We're going to put a nice new drive shaft in there. It does change part numbers to a new style that has that nickel plating on the inside of the slip joint there. But also what you can do is grease the splines on there, same as the two-piecer, and I'll show you the grease and the kit and the part number and how to do it, uh, even though th this one's not getting it. Uh, so you can try it out for yourself and get rid of that bump. Because, man, is it, I, this isn't my vehicle, and I'm just driving it to you know verify all that stuff, and it's annoying. It's really freaking annoying, especially when the rest of the truck is so nice. So uh, the 2011s, like I said, with the first year for a lot of changes, a first-year model changes for a lot, like the Explorers, the F-250s are all new in 2011. 2011 was a bad year in general. I couldn't believe the amount of work I had on 2011s uh, in, in 2011 and 2012 when they were first uh, exhibiting all these issues from any model of Fords, not just the F-150. So um, I'm going to try to show you, try to, uh, what it feels like as I take off and stop here, maybe the camera will shake and be able to feel it or something like that. Uh, but you probably know what I'm talking about already if you're watching this video. But we'll drive back to the shop now, and then I'll put on the rack, and I'll show you guys uh, what to look for on there and the grease and how to apply it. So we'll drive real quick. And it feels like the back end like is loose or something like that. And you start moving, but the back end like slipped and it moved back. And it feels like it's coming from the underside or the rear. I mean, it shakes the truck pretty good. Like I said, if you're watching this, you probably already know what the heck I'm talking about. And uh, you just want to skip ahead to the fix, right? And this is what I mean by a one-piece drive shaft. It goes all the way up to the transfer case without an extra joint in there. And before you pull it off of here, make sure you have the back end jacked up and the front wheel is chocked because you're not going to have anything holding the vehicle from rolling uh, including parking brakes or the transmission and parking pole uh, so keep that in mind. Now mine's up in the air so I don't have to do that and the other thing you need to do before you take it off of here if you're just going to lube it is actually mark the um, drive shaft to the pinion flange so you can make it back up in the exact same spot and uh, prevent stack up of uh, corrosion on there and that'll prevent any kind of driveline vibrations going back in. Now in order to take this off of here, all you need is a 12 point socket, that's 12 millimeter, and an extension so you can get past the tubing on here, and you'll be able to get a straight on shot. Make sure your transmission is in neutral, so you keep spinning it around and you get access to it. 
All right, once you get the bolts out of there, the drive shaft's gonna be stuck to the pinion flange. So what you need to do is take a hammer, I use a three pound sledge, and hit right here on it to break it free of the pinion flange. Don't hit it right here, hit it directly on the part that's actually stuck to the flange. And uh, you should usually keep a bolt in there loose. Um, I personally just hold it while I hit it with the other hand. And then it'll just simply slide out of there just like that. Now in the old one you can see it's dry inside of there and they just relied on the coating inside of there to actually make it uh, lubricated enough to slide back and forth. Whereas the new one, even though it is new and coated, they still have grease in there applied. And you can see the difference already being dry, of course it's going to stick. Now when you're bolting it back in, just slide it into the actual transfer case up there and then you can go over here and you can start lining up all the bolt holes on here. Make sure you match your mark up on there and then start putting all these bolts in by hand so we don't cross thread anything. And then most years the torque spec on these is, is 76 foot pounds on them but each year is different. Here's the uh, shaft repair kit for the two piece drive shafts and that includes a clamp to pull the boot back on them but the grease packet and the grease is still the same. They started with blue grease and they went to a green grease which you might have saw in the new drive shaft that I just showed you and then they went to this white grease as a final grease they're using. Either way it's Teflon based grease uh, to try to get that uh, drive shaft from binding in there and sticking. So this will apply the right amount of grease inside of that tube and just jam it in there just the way you saw it on the new drive shaft and then you work it back and forth in the transfer case a little bit all right, got everything torqued down, back together, and we're gonna go for a little test drive here and see if it still does it. Let me get to a stop. Take off. Oh yeah, real nice. Not feeling nothing no more, not even a hint of it. And uh, I think the main culprit here over the drive shaft zinc coating is that grease. You saw it was dry and uh, it's, just, it's gonna bind, it's gonna bind, either way. I mean, so uh, if you're having this issue and you have a one-piece drive shaft, don't fret, you can get that kit, slather it on there, work it in and out a couple times, bolt the drive shaft back up, and uh, your truck should be back to normal and not be so annoying anymore.